Hi, today I'm going to be doing my first biology video. I usually make orgo or biochem videos, but today I want to talk a little bit about endosymbiotic theory and um, just talk a little bit about plasmids and how they're useful in research. And so let's go to the marker board and discuss the general idea. Now, mitochondria and chloroplast are thought to have once been free-living bacteria, meaning they existed outside of anything like a cell or they, they were free-living, just like bacteria on your skin or bacteria on objects around your house. Now, the mitochondria, draw one of those, double matrix, yeah, or the double membrane with the matrix inside. Mitochondria actually resembles a modern bacteria a lot in, in terms of its shape and its structure, but more importantly, its DNA is very similar. Now, most or all all bacteria, modern bacteria and mitochondria use what are called plasmid DNA, and it's just basically circular DNA. So, picture a strand of DNA, the double helix, and it just loops back on on itself like that. Now, in research, we can use plasmids to actually insert genes and we use a restriction enzyme which will cut the plasmid at this very specific uh, location in the strand. So let's say we have C, G, G, A, T, A, C and the, the other side of that would be G, C, C, T, A, T, G. Now one example, echo R1 is a restriction enzyme. Now, I forget the actual sequence that Echo R1 cuts, and there's a bunch of them. There's Lambda something. I don't remember all their names. I haven't used them in a long time. But it'll cut on a specific gene in a staggered way. And it would create what's called a sticky end. So this thymine here and this adenine, once they're separated, would want to find another thymine, another adenine to actually bind to. So you would use the, the piece of DNA that you're actually putting in for, to manufacture your protein or whatever you're making would actually have the same sticky end. So it would join in and you would have a new little section in your plasmid. And then the other sticky end would just kind of form on the other end. So you would have this new gene that you're implanting in here. But enough about the, the plasmids. The bacteria, modern bacteria and mitochondria and chloroplast all use plasmid DNA, which is a key giveaway that they're related in, it, in the very least. But um, basically the theory, it makes sense because when you think about it, the, the idea is that the first cell just stumbled upon a mitochondria somehow and phagocytosed it into the, the cell membrane, whether it intended to you know, digest it or what, we don't know. It's just a, a hypothesis of like how it happened, but why it happened is obvious and why it continued to happen is obvious. Now, the mitochondria produces ATP for the cell to use energy. And in turn, the cell provides the mitochondria with shelter. So it's a perfect living relationship, and that's why it's continued for billions of years. It just makes sense. And the chloroplast is a similar story. So the chloroplast actually is, is obviously from an uh, ancient photosynthetic bacteria, kind of like cyanobacteria now. So the idea of uh, the endosymbiotic theory makes a lot of sense, and it can be... I guess proven in the sense in terms of like the DNA is similar between mitochondria and chloroplast and modern bacteria. The shape is even the same as like a modern bacteria. If you look at Euglena or some bacteria that have that oval, oblong shape. But um, the idea makes sense just like evolution and it does help to discredit the creationalists out there that believe that you know the first cells were just you know created. That makes no sense logically. But um, I hope you enjoyed this video about endosymbiotic theory and write me any suggestions or requests or comments about it. Thank you.